Good morning, Class 401 Orange Group. Mr. Waterman here with today's Period 4 Language Arts Lesson on Friday, July 2nd, 2021. Yesterday, we read The Surprise, a story about George and Martha, best friends. They are hippopotamuses. Today, we are going to read a nonfiction story about real hippos titled Hippos by Claire Miller. This is starting on page 104. You have the scanned copy that I hope you all printed off. It's a very short story, but very interesting. Let's read together. The big guys. Common hippopotamuses are the third heaviest kind of land mammal in the world. They weigh in right after elephants and rhinos. Wow, look at how big they are here in this picture. And look at their mouths, the size of it. Goodness. River horse. The word hippopotamus means river horse in the Greek language. Hippos live in big herds and eat grass the way horses do. But they aren't close relatives of horses. In fact, hippopotamuses look and act more like pigs, which are their relatives. Oh, I didn't know that. Pigs and hippopotamuses are family. You can kind of see it in the shapes of their bodies and heads. Moving along, when hippos are in a hurry, they can move fast on land and in shallow water. This means the water's not deep. In deep water, they like to sink to the bottom. There, they trot along, digging their feet into the mud. Look at that, he's at the bottom here. He looks very happy, he or she. Hippos can close their nostrils and hold their breath for about 10 minutes. They aren't great swimmers, but they can dog paddle through the water. A hippo's nose, eyes, and ears are on top of its head. That way, it can still breathe, see, and hear when most of its head is hidden under the water. Goodness. Daytime soakers. You wouldn't want to watch an all-day movie on hippos. They often look like lazy lumps in the water. But resting in water is just what they have to do. They need the moisture to keep their skin from drying out in the hot sun. What will the hippos do when dry weather turns their lakes and rivers into a mess of mud? They'll squish around and cover themselves from nose to tail. The mud becomes a sunscreen and keeps their skin wet. Wow, they look very happy. And then look at the birds on them. The end. So now, what I would like you to do, I would like you to read the story again out loud two times. You can read it by yourself, and of course it would be great if you read it to mom and dad. I'm sure they would love to find out about hippos too. After that, please take out the workbook that I gave you a few days ago to take home. Now, yesterday you had to write sentences for the vocabulary words from the surprise. 
remember to bring this in with you when you come to school. Today, we are looking at page 78, okay? And this is a Venn diagram. We use this to compare. For today's activity, it says to tell how George and Martha and the hippos in hippos are alike. Tell how they are different. So here, here's George and Martha. Only information about George and Martha. Here is the space for hippos. This is only for what we just read about hippos. Okay. And this is both. Okay. This is how they are the same. Okay. This one is going to be very easy. George and Martha, they are hippos. They are all hippos. Okay? Now, what do George and Martha do in the story? Well, if you have your story nearby, I'll give you a good example. Martha's wearing a dress, right? And George is wearing a hat. But these hippos, they're not wearing any clothes, right? So that's one way we can tell how they are different. George and Martha wear clothes. I'm using full sentences here, okay? Hippos do not wear clothes, okay? So what you're going to do, you're going to use the two stories to tell me how they are the same and to tell me how they are different, okay? Now, I did the first one. I'm going to number them. This is gonna be, oh, my pencil broke. Whoops. I love it when things happen like this when I'm making a video. Sharpening. Ah, that's a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that's much better. All right. Number two, number two. Please try to come up with, I would say, maybe two to three more things on your own. Okay. There you go. And please write it in full sentences. When you're finished, go on to page 79. Now this was a story map, but we are going to focus on connecting and comparing. And it says to use details from the surprise and Julius, remember Julius? to fill in the chart below. The surprise, who? Well, we know the surprise is about George and Martha. In Julius, we have Julius the pig Julius and Maya.
Okay. Where? Where does this take place? Well, with the surprise, it takes place. Looking here, they are outside for most of the story. Okay. It, or I'm going to say they, they are, they're outside Julius and Maya, they're at, make it a full sentence, they are at Maya's house. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is to tell me a little bit about what happens at the beginning of the story, in the middle of the story, and at the end of the story. Okay. So for example, for the surprise, this was a very short story. This is the beginning, the first two pages, right? Then, this is the middle of the story. Tell me a little bit about what happens. And finally, this is the end of the story. The very end. Please use complete sentences with capital letters and full stops. And that's it. These are your two writing activities today. Don't forget to read hippos two more times. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message on Class Dojo, or you can email me. Remember, if we come back to school next week, please bring all of your workbooks with you, okay? All of these with you. If we are online, please make sure you keep this workbook safe, in a safe place so you don't lose it. We will be working out of this workbook next week, in school or online. That's it. Enjoy the rest of your day studying students and have a spectacular weekend. I hope to see you all next week. Take care, stay safe, be well. And remember, we have three more weeks of school until summer vacation. Yay! Have a great day. Bye-bye.